the story about you playing in Paris without a passport. What happened there? Yeah, yeah. So it was one week that Peter came to play the Torriano down in Kentish Town. And um, <laughs> he said to me, oh, do you want to come? Do you guys want to come and do two gigs in Paris? Yeah, of course. You know, why not? It'd be great. And anyway, I suddenly realized I didn't have a passport. And then everyone said, well, it doesn't matter because you can get a passport. And, uh, you know, these days you just pay a bit of extra money and it's fine, you know. But because mine had gone missing, they said, oh, you'll have to wait a month before you can get out. And of course, that would have been too late. I'd have missed. You, you know, Peter was talking about a few days away. <laughs> So we sat there and we were like, how are we going to do this? And Mark said to me, oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. I've done it before. You just sneak into the country and, you you know, I said, yeah, when was that? The 90s, right? And he went, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I'll never forget, as we sat there, the, the news was on and it said, today we're going to be uh, checking for asylum seekers coming into Paris. And I was just like, oh, wow. God. But I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to do it. I thought, fuck it, let's just do it. And um, yeah, I hid under this. Uh, there was this couch. It was just perfect, like on the on the in the tour vehicle. And I just hid under it, and we got through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm back as well. Was it not so bad coming back? Well, the way back was a bit of a different story. <laughs> So we go out there, we do the two shows of Peter, and they were brilliant. I don't know if you ever saw the video, but we got up and we did pipe down with them. It was just a magical time. It was really exciting. It was sort of the still quite early period of dead cuts. And we're coming back. Uh, right, Jerome, it's time to hide now. And I remember this uh, this witch I knew at the time had given me this uh, runic symbol. And she said, you hold on to that. You, you'll be able to get past the you know, security. No problem. And I was sort of like, Okay, well, this is all I've got, so I might as well just run with it, you know. So I get underneath the couch, and our driver, I don't know why I did this, maybe nerves or something, he crashes into customs. See, in that little booth they have on the side. Oh, wow, okay. He goes, bam, that's it. They're like, I could hear them outside, like, we're going to search this fucking vehicle now, and I'm just like, and we had a really optimistic tour manageress. She was always like trying to say, like, you know, things were a bit hairy. She'd sort of say, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. And she just suddenly went, that's it, we're fucked. And I thought, if she's saying that, then we definitely are. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they come on board and it's like sniffer dogs and, um, you know, like the French, like 
police and stuff. And this guy, sort of like Inspector Clouseau type, got like a torch and he's coming right up to my face like this. And I'm like, and I'm like thinking, I'm just holding still, clutching this like runic symbol in my hand, going, oh. <laughs> well, like, where, where were you like, stood? You, you weren't stood, you weren't hiding at this point. No, I was, I was underneath the, I was still underneath the, uh, the couch. Oh, right, so okay. Like, and he's shining a torch, obviously looking for contraband or whatever. And uh, <laughs> he just stops and he looks like that. I thought, oh, you've seen me. And then he starts going like that. Like, <laughs> and then I'm thinking, what, what's going on here? And I thought, oh, any minute they're going to horse out. And then he just got up and, no, it's fine, you can go. What? And, uh, <laughs> what? So several things went from mind. I thought, I've really thought this musician has forgotten his passport. But I highly doubt that. The thing is, they could also keep you for several months, apparently, without a passport, in jail. Wow. Which I was told after the fact. <laughs> the, you know, the band said, oh, yeah, by the way, we didn't want to tell you at the time. But, but no, it was a great experience. Uh, that was fantastic. And I remember calling my mum. <laughs> I was just like, where have you been? I said, oh, Paris. Well, how did you get there? You don't have a passport. Like, oh, you're never going to believe it. <laughs> and instead of like telling me off, she went, oh, I'm really proud of you. I was like, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that witch yeah. sorted you out there then. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely the, the runic symbols have never let me down since. So <clears throat> that was a really powerful, exciting time. I mean, you know, Pete has been very generous like that when it's come to shows, you know, and uh, and it meant we would go um, to France quite a few times. We went uh, after, shortly after that, back out there to play in the Jane Club, which is where Jim Morrison was like the last club he went to before he died or something. And we remember we were playing there. And uh, it was really funny. I think me and Pete were playing. Yeah, we were playing Pipe Down that night too, right? So we're playing. And this guy walks in at the bar. It was like just gone midnight, dressed up as Jim Morrison. And I'm nudging Pete and I'm saying, can you see that? Can you see that? And he's going, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I later found out it was um, a guy that just does it for a laugh. He goes there to sort of freak people out, <laughs> to think he's like a But Yeah, many great nights in France. We did the very last baby shambles gig in la havre i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right probably not it's like a port town mm. in france and um that was with baby shambles. that was that was another great show you know